seem to be that guy. Yeah. So I think they're hoping that he can come back and he can give them a little bit of secondary scoring on that line. He was squeezing a stick a little bit. He was goalless in the, in the last couple of games that he played before the injury. Hopefully, you know, the injury might have been a blessing in disguise. Takes back, watches the game from the press field, and gets a better understanding. Well, and I think the other thing is, how long has he been playing with a bit of a nagging injury? And yeah, that's one of those true. things that you question once he's gone out of the lineup. So maybe now back fully healthy, and you're going to see a little bit of a different side of him. Okay, that brings us to my favorite part of the show, the fan duel first goal of the game. Becky, we got to get you off the schneid <laughs> here. All right? It's got to happen. I have a re really, really good feeling that Santa Claus has something in store for you, and that's the first goal pick today. Thank you. you I get hope to so. go first. Let's go, Becky. All right, so I'm taking Mitch Marner. He's oh, okay. gone two games without a point. This is very uncharacteristic of him. I think he's going to get back on the score sheet tonight. Last time they faced Tampa Bay, he had two goals, a shorthanded yeah. and a power play goal. So I think he's going to shine here against Tampa Bay. I, I like what you're thinking. However, I believe that he will be on the scoreboard. However, I think it, that's because it's going to be an assist passing it to the center, 91, John Tavares. That's who I'm picking. The captain feels like he's been kind of uh, squeezing the stick a little bit too much, a little qu quiet in his last four games. Um, I think tonight you, you're going to see him come out, come out strong, lead by example, as he always does. Well, we'll good talk, luck. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to you as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the Tampa Bay Lightning. This is the first time that the Leafs have hosted the Tampa Bay Lightning since the 2022 uh, playoff run. Obviously, we know how that game ended in Game 7. Um, we played them earlier in the year, lost 4-3 in overtime. Tampa Bay is Tampa Bay, and it seemed like after a slow start, they are hitting top gear. Yeah, they, they're, they've been... Five, five games in a row they've won, and this is a team that can score goals. They've had 24 goals over the last five games, so they're putting pucks in the net. We've seen that. Their top three, four offensive producers are very dynamic and very good, so this is a team that you can rely on to bring some really offensive uh, threatening weapons. Yeah. Um, one thing I always say with the Tampa Bay Lightning is you cannot play 59 minutes against them. You have to play a full 60 against them. In that 4-3 overtime loss, it looked like the Buds were on top of them all game, but then again, as in always in Tampa Bay form, they somehow found out a way to squeak it out. What should the Buds have learned from that early loss? Well, I think the big thing with when you're playing Tampa Bay is that you've got to play a solid defensive game. We know they have offensive weapons. They were two for six last time on the power play, so you know their power play can score as well. You can't give them six opportunities. You need to stay out of the box. The Leafs, when they have been their best this year, has been when they have been good defensively, holding their structure, five guys coming back. They're one of the top teams defensively in the league this year. That's what they need to bring to absolutely, this team tonight. Absolutely. We always talk about the offensive firepower with the Tampa Bay Lightning. There's a reason why they were back-to-back -back champs, and that's because Vasilevsky, they have the best goalie in the NHL. It's not It's not debatable. I'm always going <laughs> to say this. Vasilevsky is the best goalie in the NHL. What do the Leafs have to do to get past them tonight? Yeah, well, and let's start with the fact that his save percentage over the last three games is actually a 955, so that's he's a great goalie, and he's been playing very well as of late. So again, I would start in the D zone, but when they get their offensive opportunities, you got to get traffic to the net on these guys. You need to get in front of his eyes. You need to be poking in rebounds and making his life difficult in the crease. Yep. Let's also talk about our Russian goalie, though, Ilya Brizgalov, coming off of a loss. He looks to get the start again in net tonight. Um, what can he do, and what does he need to do to center his game after a disappointing uh, loss against Washington? Yeah, certainly not the game he wanted when he was going back into Washington, so this is a good rebound opportunity opportunity for him and any great athlete you're going to have bad moments or bad games you want to be able to bounce back strong so for him this is the bounce back game he needs to make the saves that they need him to make in the opportune moments you know it's going to be a close game so the big saves when the team needs it to give them the opportunity to win I have a weird feeling um, it's going to feel like a playoff atmosphere. Whenever there's a playoff atmosphere, you think about Victor Hedman, one of those guys who steps up strong, always comes to play, and is one of the best D-men in the NHL. Well, a Norris Trophy winner, Conn Smythe yeah. winner. I mean, this is a guy you know is going to play in the big moments, and he's going to both ends of the ice, right? He plays very well in his own zone, but you can rely on him for offense, so the Leafs are going to be have, have to be aware when he's on the ice. It's the one advantage I would say this team has over Toronto right yep. now with Morgan Riley out. They've got a little bit more offensive production from the back end than the Leafs do however, at this point in time. However, we've been saying that the Toronto team team defense has been a, a unit, a solid unit. We're not looking for one player to step up. It seems like it's stepped him up by uh, by by association and by you know everybody just coming together, so we're looking for that tonight. Should be a fun when you can catch it of course on tsn and listen with joe and jim on the fan 590 i also want to give a big shout out to everybody that came out from sick kids to the ford performance center uh yesterday to watch the Leafs practice there was a lot of smiles a lot of games a lot of fun to be had and the players were entertaining and engaging with them it was a really fun environment and i hope that you guys have a very merry christmas on behalf of becky keller i'm scott willits this has been live from morning skate presented by fanduel as always go leafs go